So big thanks to all of you who participated in the straw poll at the end of the last episode. That was basically the only way I could think of possibly finding a winner for this series because there were so many great nations and religions to give the victory to that I personally couldn't decide who it was and in fact you guys actually had a really difficult time finding a winner yourself. Um, the straw poll results, I actually checked the straw poll results at three different times and they were always different. The first time I checked a few hours after the upload of the last episode we well we actually had the Shinto winning by a huge margin and I thought alright this is pretty this is pretty clear but then when I checked checked a few hours later we actually had the Shinto, Fraticelli and the Katars all up there at around 26, 27, 28 percent and now that I've checked a few days later um, we I think pretty much everyone who has been following the series from the start has has voted and now we actually have two nations uh, at, at the top spot we got the Katars and the Shinto both with 32 percent then we got the Fraticelli at 17 the reformed with 15% of the vote and the totemists have actually 1%. Literally one person voting for them just so that they don't feel bad. Uh, I think that's really funny. The totemists are probably the only nation out of, out of those five that I wouldn't be comfortable with giving the victory to. Simply because... I mean, to be fair, the totemists, they have been, they have been isolated for a long time of the series. They declared one war and they won that war. Uh, which is which is good. So they, they got a clean record, but overall they were just a bit boring. I think they were just not as involved as other nations, such as the Fraticelli. So you know, just from the entertainment value, I wouldn't have given them that much. Um, or I wouldn't want to give them the victory. And also, the Totemists really they didn't shine in this very last war where we had the Fraticelli and the Reformed on one side against Qatar. The the Totemists could have really capitalized on that and taken over some more lands here in North America and they didn't do that and that's what I hold against them. So therefore I'm I'm okay with them not winning. Uh, but I've I've been crusading against them pretty pretty hard. Uh, or campaigning against them I should say. So I think it's it's fair to mention and that's actually also why I put them in that just um, if we check out the uh, the development of each single nation, they are number two in the world. So, you know, they, they definitely did very well for themselves, and also they have a lot of cash stored up. I mean, not as much as the fetishes. Holy shit, 17,000? I think that's the most money I've ever seen in the treasury. Wow, that's actually, kind of, that's actually kind of insane. And they got no inflation. The only people with inflation are actually the Catholics, which I find is kind of, is kind of funny, but... Yeah, anyway, so that's kind of Im impressive. Also, if we look at the income, we see the totemists and fetishists high up there. So yeah, so they definitely deserve um, to be to be mentioned, but you know, they're only great power number five. They just got uh, they just got slipped in there. But anyway, um, yeah, that that's on the totemists. Other than that, I think every nation, either Reform, Fraticelli, or Qatar and Shinto, could have won. I personally picked the Qatars. So if we're just strictly going by the viewer votes, I guess we should give the victory to the Shinto. But as I said, overall it doesn't really matter, the results change quite drastically, and you know, there's still people that might discover the series just now, and they can obviously also get to that video and you know make their decision on the straw poll so things will change but overall i think it's not really a big deal uh it, it was just kind of to see what you guys think it was uh, just i was just interested in it anyway um i also asked you guys what you would like to see here in the last episode what we would want to or what i should go over and only one of you actually responded you wanted to see some of the cultures, and we're going to have a look at that. But before that, just a quick overview over the religions. Now, for the most part, I've already shown that, so I'm not going to mention too much, because, um, you know, we, we, we kind of know it already, right? I will zoom in a little bit here, since there are many small provinces. Uh, we should obviously mention the uh, Karite, the Sunni Karites, and the Orthodox who are here. Uh, the Samarithians have survived and actually, you know, they, they help, they, they've been uh, staying true to their religion. We have the Church of Zun here, apparently. Uh, okay, interesting. So yeah, this is a uh, religion pretty cool. We obviously have a huge mess in the Middle East. Most of the religions that got killed actually started off in the Middle East. So we, we definitely know that there's a lot of religious tension there. And, uh, you know, getting out of, uh, you know, coming out on top 
in this religion, like the Monophysites, I think they're probably one of the stronger nations here, or the Sunni. That's a, that's an achievement on their own, because there were just so many religions started out here. So to, to survive this mess is is a big deal. It, it's, it's a big deal. Um, yeah, um, but as I mentioned, I should also go over the cultures. And the cultures, they were kind of random that I picked, like for the Hellenic faith that got wiped out relatively quickly. I went with the Athenian culture. I gave the Jews the Hebrew culture. A lot of them, a lot of the, you know, cultures here or a lot of the religions here got the Persian culture. And then, yeah, I just kind of picked some that I would, f that I always feel like fit quite well. Um, now, one thing that I've noticed, we have a lot of weird culture going on in both India and China, but overall, just in Asia, uh, the, the cultures are a bit crazy. So I'm not really sure why we have so many different cultures here. It must have something to do with trade company zones or something like that. I'm not entirely sure though, because it's not affecting Asia as much, or actually not at all. Because all of the different cultures we see here are due to, well, different nation colonizing. So I'm really not sure why we have this, but yeah, I guess that's just that's just the way it is. We also have it here. Although, no, I think this is actually not this is actually legit. Sulawesi is the culture I gave to the animist, who then turned Sunni. Alright. Well, I guess we didn't really check out the religion here. Ibari. So basically all of Indonesia and Australia is kind of held by the Muslims. Wh whichever Muslims, you know, be it Sunni, Shia, or Abadi, they certainly got a firm grip over this region. But yeah, um, so that is that was that. I think at the end here, I would like to go over the religious ledger, because, ledger, yes, the religious ledger, there you go. Um, because obviously, number one, the reform, when, it just, when we just go by a number of provinces under their rule, which is pretty impressive, um, but uh, I would also mention the Sunni here, because they, I believe, have the most, no, it's still the Catholic with the most nations fighting for them, but the Sunni are pretty good, because they are way up here, um, they're one of the, yeah, one of the top five um, most spread religions, and they don't actually have a great power. So that's pretty impressive on their part. Of course, a lot of uh, this has to do with, um, you know, many former, uh, many of the starting nations being converted to the Sunni faith, but still, that is, that is quite impressive. But we also should probably check out the few religions that actually got killed off. As I mentioned, most of them actually got killed in the Middle East. So the Druzi, Yazidi, Polishians, Monotolites, and the Karites, all of them started out in that very region, and they all just, they, they couldn't stand a chance, they got destroyed. We also had the Lenik, who got killed pretty quickly, the Sikh, they just converted to the Theravada, but they are technically, their starting country at least, is still there. Their enemies also converted, um, and the Removans and Hellenic are the only ones, actually, who got legitimately killed off, didn't start in the Middle East. Well, and I guess the Druze, they, they started in Egypt, but anyway. Um, so yeah, that is that for the most part. The rest, you can obviously see, they are still somewhere clinging on to some provinces. And they at least have one nation fighting for them. So yeah, that's nice. Um, but that was it for the most part. I think we're now going to have maybe a look at the at the timeline. Where was that again? That was the timeline, yes. Because um, uh, actually, Russia? That's kind of strange. So, all right, we see, <laughs> okay, that's weird. So this is obviously the save I used. Now, by the way, a lot of people have been asking if I could provide a save to, um, well, if I could pr provide a save of this, the, the starting save. I will actually do that. There's going to be a link to it in the description. Um, there's going to be two links, in fact. There's going to be one link, which is my converted CK2 save, because that one you need in order to play the other save. And the second one will be the EU4 save, the actual setup where all of the custom nations are already in place. So you can uh, check out the description there and play this for yourself if you're interested. Um, just be sure to also play in the right version. Of, uh, of the game, but I left that in the description as well. Anyway, so I think we'll uh, just quickly go forward. It's actually, hmm, that's actually so weird. This does not actually show what I expected. It was showing, no, it sh shows France and stuff. 
Oh, I see why. Because it... Ah, you know what? So this shows the uncolonized provinces. Ah, okay. Well, it gets better. It gets better. Um, so let's actually zoom out. I'm not sure why this is D07. Those are the Sue Minusco. Okay. Well, that's actually kind of strange. It's not as great as I was of as I would have hoped. But yeah. All right. I guess you you still get the idea uh, somehow. Anyway, uh, one last thing I would like to talk about here is the we can actually slow down here at the end a little bit. The uh, the last thing I want to talk about here is that I'm going to be taking a break from these AI-only religious wars because I don't think there's many more religions I could add. I can't really think of any one off the top of my head yet. And even if I was to come up with a few more religions that could potentially be added, they, um, they are probably won't make it in anyways because there's a cap on how many custom nations I can create and we are almost pretty much yeah we pretty much hit the cap already so there's not much more I can do and so I think we're gonna leave it at this I am thinking over of creating a another one of these AI only uh, scenarios with cultures a lot of people have been suggesting that the only problem with cultures is that once again there's so many cultures so many different cultures in year four that can't possibly create one na one nation for each of the cultures so I did think about maybe making culture groups that could be something that would work out but even that is weird because it might still be too many culture groups and even then uh, I would have to find or pick one certain culture to represent the entire culture group and that might be difficult so i'm not entirely sure what we're going to see here so there's definitely going to be a break but i am working on something if you have any suggestions or ideas you can obviously leave them in the comment section i always appreciate those uh, other than that though i just want to say a big thanks to all of you who have obviously watched the series and hopefully also enjoyed it and um yeah i hope to see you guys next time thank you so much for watching once again and uh yeah that was it